27th of April 2011. A super outbreak that needs no introduction. This day is cemented in tornado history. On this day, almost a dozen EF4s and four EF5s would reach for the ground. If you have a favorite tornado, it's very likely to be from this outbreak or at least from this year. Today we're gonna look at my personal favorite, the Cordova EF4. Over two hours, this tornado would track 127 miles, deal 170 million dollars in damage and take the lives of 13. This tornado is sadly overshadowed by the Tuscaloosa tornado that simultaneously happened just 20 miles south of it. But before we begin, I really gotta ask you to subscribe and like because videos like this take a huge amount of effort, especially in researching and editing and stuff. So if you want to see more of this and kind of boost my motivation to do videos like this, please like and subscribe. And if you have any sort of criticism that you would like to post in the comments, please keep in mind that this is my first video that is styled like this and the quality is definitely gonna improve in the future. The tornado would start off 5 miles west of Carrollton in western Alabama. Right after touching down, it would uproot its first trees. After that, the tornado would track through mostly rural area and would expand from 400 yards to roughly 800 yards. The tornado would then continue going almost perpendicular to Highway 17, passing within just a mile of the town of Stanzel. It would then continue and hit the Skelton Funeral Home. Sadly, on the damage assessment toolkit, there's no record of this damage here. The tornado would then pass within just half a mile of the town of Reform and then widen to almost 1200 yards. And here, 20 miles after forming and around 2 miles west of Sion, it would produce its first damage. And although this damage is pretty irrelevant because it's only EF1 it's, and it's no major home destroyed, I still wanted to look at it since it's the first actual structure that it hit and that it's visible on the DAT. This would earn a final rating of EF1 with 97 miles per hour. It would then continue to deal mostly EF1 damage to family residences northeast of Reform. The tornado would then widen to 1450 feet and strengthen to EF3. Here it would also debug trees with only stops of the largest branches remaining. After uprooting some trees and barely missing the Macedonia Baptist Church, it would pass south of New Lexington and cross Highway 13. While passing within a mile of Sand Town, the tornado would widen to 1450 feet and deal EF3 damage. A mile north of Bethel, it would completely destroy a mobile home. And after crossing into a more populated area, south of Jasper, it would hit the town of Cordova. And yeah, here we are. This is where the tornado hit Cordova. It got its name from here. And the footage you're seeing in the background also came from here. I kind of just destroyed my brain trying to find this spot where this video is filmed on Google Earth. I put a time lapse, or you're gonna see a time lapse now, where I'm trying to find it. And this is just like a percent maybe of what I try to do. And I just couldn't find it. If you do find it, please tell me in the comments. I'm, I re would really like to know, but I just could not find where this video is filmed. I would have liked to put this uh, somewhere into this video, but I just, 
I couldn't. Sorry for that, but I just had to quickly say this. But even though I couldn't find where this video was filmed, I was able to find where another video was filmed. This video would start off four and a half miles southwest of the tornado on an overpass. The tornado would stay over mostly open areas with it not even being condensed all the way to the ground. But the cameraman would then capture the tornado quickly beginning to strengthen and to widen. From here on out the tornado would start to actually fully condense, almost completely reaching the ground. Up until now the tornado was mostly blocked by trees and hills, but now it was gonna cross Interstate 22 and the cameraman would get a nice view of its multi-vortex structure. Here you can see the insane multi-vortex structure of the tornado right above the ground. I slowed down this video a bit so you can see it for a bit longer. Because in this video this 9 second section is basically everything you see from its ground structure. Skipping ahead just a bit you can see that the tornado has now really condensed and is now right next to the town of Cordova which it's going to start impacting now. Looking at its damage path from above, you can see something weird though. In the entire town of Cordova, there are only 4 damage indicators, although you would think there would be a lot more. I have two theories why that could be the case. First off, just the amount of stuff that was happening at the time. In the 24 hour span of April 27th, there were over 300 tornadoes, so I think that the damage assessors maybe just didn't have time to look at every single building if it just had small damage. And the four damage indicators that are in Cordova are one EF2 and three EF3 indicators. So perhaps they just looked at the strongest indicators that they found. My second theory is actually that the buildings that the Cordova tornado hit were already damaged because in the morning hours Cordova has already been hit by an EF3. Looking at the damage assessment toolkit, you can see that the area the Cordova tornado basically cored was already hit before by the EF3. What I don't understand and why I think this theory might just be wrong though, is because one of the EF3 damage indicators is already basically in the path of the EF3 from before. So most likely the first theory that the damage assessors just didn't have time to look at every building is true. Changing from the damage assessment toolkit to an aerial view shows a completely different picture though. Throughout the entire south, southeastern part of the city, homes have been damaged, destroyed or even completely leveled. Four people would lose their life in Cordova and it's unknown how many would get injured, but I'm guessing it likely was above 20. Recovery efforts continued for months after the tornado. In the weeks and months after the tornado, numerous fires started in downtown Cordova within the rubble, which further damaged structures and temporarily stunted recovery efforts. Cordova would be awarded around $5.1 million, which is equivalent to $6.9 million in 2023, to aid with rebuilding efforts after the tornado. In May 2011, the mayor of Cordova issued a citywide ordinance that prohibited the use of FEMA aid trailers within city limits. This could be because placing someone who's just been hit by a tornado in a mobile home, which is basically the worst place to be in a tornado, is not really that smart. This ban was seen highly controversial and was met with nationwide backlash. 
FEMA was also criticized for not carrying out any rebuilding work in downtown Cordova after the tornado. And the downtown area was sealed off using a chain link fence to prevent trespassers. One of the more significant damages that you could find were that some mobile home undercarriages were tossed at least 500 yards and a two-ton trailer was thrown over a mile and left a 2.5 foot deep crater where it impacted the ground. Two double wide mobile homes were also tossed at least 100 yards and a third mobile home was tossed 100 yards up a 50 foot embankment and destroyed along this segment of the path. Coming back to the damage assessment toolkit, you might have noticed before that there wasn't any EF4 damage indicator in Cordova. I think that there actually was EF4 damage in Cordova though and it just wasn't on the DAT. Here is the actual first EF4 damage indicator though that we see. These three damage indicators are actually three really weird ones. The first one is a 5 ton bulldozer rolled over. The second one is a dump truck and a 24 foot trailer tossed 50 yards. And the third and weirdest one is what I think is should be a ripped out engine of some sort of truck. I'm gonna start skipping over a bit of its path sometimes now because the tornado is now over mostly rural areas and didn't hit very much. Two miles south of Arkadelphia, the tornado would completely destroy a cinder block home. I actually think that this tornado was EF5 strength at this point. First off, if you look at the EF4 damage indicator, you're gonna see that it's on the very outside of the damage path, suggesting that the winds in the core of the tornado were much stronger than 166 miles per hour. Second, the tornado actually lifted up a storm shelter which collapsed on the people taking shelter inside then. Although I have to admit it's unclear if it was an above ground storm shelter or a below ground. It sh probably was above ground though because lifting up an underground storm shelter doesn't really work. But before we go, I have one more video for you. This is just about one mile west of Sneed, round about 5.5 miles southeast of the tornado. This video is taken rather to the end of the tornado's path, as the tornado would dissipate just a few minutes after this video. You can see in the video that towards the end the tornado is getting smaller and smaller. Just before this video started, the tornado almost completely destroyed a family residence, leaving only small interior rooms standing. Here you can see that the tornado has already gotten a lot smaller. The picture on the right is how it looked before and the picture on the left is how it's looking right now. It's also going to pass within just a mile of Brooksville right now. It's past that. It's on north of that now. See these? No, that, that's a different one. See, these clouds are going it also that way. just completely destroyed a family residence, collapsing every wall, which got it an EF3 rating with 160 miles per hour, which, which is just barely below the 165 needed for EF4. And yeah, this is the end of the video. I really hope you liked the video. If you do, like, like and subscribe. And please, if you have any criticism, uh, if you think I did something bad, please tell me in the comments. I'm gonna do more of these type of videos in the future and I wanna optimize them the best I can. If you have any tornadoes or just weather events in general that you would like me to cover, also put it in the comments. 
if you especially enjoyed some of the different parts I did in the video, for example, the damage overview or the path from the start or the 3D animations, please tell me as well. And yeah, I'm gonna leave you with some of the towns that it missed towards the end and by how much it missed it. And I hope to see you in the next video as well. See ya! And I'd also like to thank CF Productions for helping me with the 3D animations and giving me the idea of using them in the first place.